In any case, all night, the Israelites were able to cross over the dry land. Now they say the scientists today, even as they find the wheels of the chariots back then, it was in very, very, very deep territory. I don't know about you, we're not Aquamans, right? Maybe we can dive in a little bit of aqua, you know, gear, but not for long. But the Israelites were able to pass free. I always wonder why, you know, in our churches, as I get to stand up here, you know, on this side and always see this lane, I cannot help but envision water and a dry land. How many of you know that song? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, baby, but then I also learned that it could be obey me, let my people go. Anybody know? Oh, it's a young people's song. I was going to sing it. My husband was right. He said, you're going to have to teach it. You know, like, can I go, what? You know, because it's Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, baby, let my people go. Ugh. Yeah, 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 you know, and everything. But the words are straight up. Tells about that the great part I like is it says, and all of Pharaoh's army came to the Red Sea, but that they did the dead man's float. You know, as, as strong and powerful, and I used to have fun singing that song. <laughs> and then when I kind of realized more so what it was like, God is a God. To fear, not because you're scared, but because he is due our reverence. We, we as believers, Christ followers, got to clearly know that like you said earlier, God, everything he does is G-O-O-D, everything is good. Everything. You're going to see destruction. Times ahead is going to be like seeing what we just read about. Can you imagine seeing what I thought cheerfully about the dead man's float and be proud about it? God is not heartless. But we must know how important it is for us to reverence him. He's not a joke either. The Egyptians took up the pursuit, and all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and horsemen, went in after them. But in the morning watch, they were all dead. Not one of them survived. On these exercises I was talking about in the military and the on-point people, it's easy to see everyone else. For that on-point person or even a team, they are camouflaged with the surroundings. So me, in, in my position in the Army, well, I would have been the one that they can see. <laughs> you know? So I wouldn't be that on-point person. But providing I could actually see even that person, a good point is to try to blend in with your surroundings. Be stealth in our ways. Follow close enough to know where God is leading us. Don't be afraid of what's to come because we are never alone. See, from that very moment, there was no reasons of fear, but I'm sure the Israelites, can you imagine yourself there? Powerful wind, keeping that water, and maybe some splash back, right? I mean, I even imagine like, with all our tropical fish and everything else, could we see them? It's, a little terrifying. But it became a way. It became the road. It became that narrow gate. 
Trust me, is what God said. Go. And here's the amazing end point. When they got to the other side, what did they do? After they already saw all their enemies laid dead in the waters, they praised God. Can I get you to say hallelujah? <laughs> Jesus has our back. In fact, my husband was watching, a, I think, a weightlifting competition thing. And it takes me back. Because I did weightlifting when I was in high school. And I remember having to learn how to, um, what is it, squat. The part I didn't like was in a mirrored room. And girls and boys alike. And they would say, oh no, you gotta, you gotta um, put your back down more so your butt actually goes out more, right? You were wearing shorts. I was a shy girl. I was like, and you, you see the mirror and all the guys are back there, right? And it's like, I quit. I quit. <laughs> After that first day, I actually quit. But I had that desire inside. So when I was watching that competition, I actually, was there giving, telling him all kinds of stuff as if I'm the athlete, right? And I say, oh, you know what? That's not a good posture. The way they, I can't believe they do certain things like, you know, for even the deadlifts and everything. They've changed a lot from what I've known. But um, how far God went to prove to the Israelites is where I'm getting at. No matter our experiences, it's what God is doing. What is he saying to you? What has he shown you? In our Bible, we have Old Testament, New Testament. We spoke about the books, many of them. Just take one and compare, right? So here it is. In coming between the threat and the target, the Bible says Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. At this very moment, Romans 8.34. And then it says, For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's very presence. Hebrews 9.24. Jesus got your back. Turn to your neighbor. Let him know. Jesus got your back. Wake him up. Let him know. <laughs> Jesus got your back. God has gone far to prove to the Israelites. Everything in this word, he says, still is for us. Circumstances may be different. We're in a different generation. Bottom line. Still the same. After giving Israel all night to cross the sea on dry land, God stepped out of the way of Pharaoh, knowing that his stubborn pride hadn't taken the hint. No, he went back and he went after them. All night long, that massive cloud was preventing them from pursuing Israel all night long. See, pride goes before fall, it says, and a haughty spirit before destruction, Proverbs 16, 18. You can say, Pharaoh got his. Ten times Pharaoh had been warned. I spoke vaguely about it last week, right? All the plagues. To include that, why didn't Pharaoh just stay home because he lost his own son. He didn't even mourn. He took on anger instead. Apostle Peter reminds us in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. Do you believe that? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. But everyone, is to come to repentance. 
There comes a time when the cup of iniquity spills over and justice takes the shape of the Lord's wrath. You and I never want to find out where that line is. We shouldn't be in that pursuit. That's the same as trying to predict when the end of the world is. God doesn't ask us to do that. No. Not try to be God. That is why it's wise to fear God and heed his warnings. Moses tells us, the Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. Maybe they thought they were superior technology, right? Because they had horses versus the people walking with their families and baggage and everything carrying it over. But really, had they not noticed the walls of water on both sides of them? Were they not fearful? I don't think so. The word says, when God started confusion. When their chariots' wheels were starting to fall off. That's when they started feeling like, uh-oh, we're stuck in the middle. They probably said, retreat, retreat, turn back. Too late. When God gets upset, <laughs> I just cannot envision what happens. He created all things. I think in a blink, it took him, you know, he, we know that in the book of Genesis, it went through how many days? Seven days. And God rested. In a blink, in a flash, all can be gone. Back to black. Back to a mess. But God loves us. He didn't create us because he wanted to hate us. Hebrews 10, 31 said, It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We know it because the next things we're told is, the Egyptians then said, Let Let's get away from the Israelites. They said the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. So I can tell you this, right? Like many, they know there is a God. Whether they accept, that's the hardship. Oh, that they had come to the realization on the banks of the Red Sea, and better yet, they only stayed home and mourned the loss of their firstborn children. See, there's a point where repentance will no longer cut it. Where a hard heart reaps its reward. And unfortunately, those who refuse to learn from Pharaoh's mistakes eventually find out the hard way just how wrong it is not to fear God. But where is our greater story told? That God was preparing this whole Old Testament. And it went silent for over 300 years between Old Testament and New Testament. Was the coming of Jesus. Can you say it a little louder? Jesus. What else do you call him? Jesus, Messiah, our Savior, our Redeemer. The water swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. Not one survived. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's in Second Chronicles. New Testament or Old Testament? New Testament? In the new. In the new. If they will come and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. He told Ezekiel the prophet, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart full of stone, or your heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful 
to keep my laws. So the Old Testament laws, we know as the Ten Commandments, do they apply to us today? Oh yes, they have never changed. And so part of our teaching and learning and raising up is about the Ten Commandments. Some of the simple things is do not steal. I stole. <laughs> and when I think about the fact that Jesus is with me all the time and he saw me steal, I feel worse than the people that either figured it out or didn't. I stole when I was young. I even was a person who was in the place at the wrong time when my friend stole and threw her things on me. I'm standing outside the store. Guess who gets a punch? I'm a kid in elementary. I get hit by a grown lady from the store because my friend stole and threw that stuff on my boy. Did I want to kill her? Oh, you know, and she was twigs. I could have snapped her in half real easy. <laughs> but that was my friend. I still love her to today. But I know that all of us have done things that we're not so proud of. But know that God intended everything for good, not for bad. The Apostle Peter, he promised, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. That's in Acts 2. That the day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Now remember, God didn't hold it against them, and yet the people were complaining. Moses, how did you take us out of Egypt to travel all this way to die in the desert? We need food, we need this, we need that. The fear of the Lord was a signal of responsive attitude of submission. Give it all to Jesus. 